the essence of your livelihood comes as a result of the will of the king. So you, as a subject to the king, not the president, as a subject to the king, your task is to have a life that is in the will of the king. Are we together? Because the king will say kill him and you will be gone. L let him live and then you will live. That is the king. The king is a dictator. The king does not need your permission to execute the things that he executes. Are we together? So now I am standing here. Yes, my theme is heaven is beautiful, but I'm standing here that as, as we look at this kingdom called heaven, I want us to first look at the king, the king of heaven and the king of the earth. Who is the king to you and to me? So let me explain this further. I'm still on the preamble. Jesus is king. Now, he is king, meaning you did not elect him into that position. So when you come to the presence of God, some of us are used, you know, when, when, sometimes when we travel for Christmas <laughs> and we travel to our villages, they introduce those who have come from Kampala. And then they say, those who have come from Kampala stand up and then they will do what? They will clap for you. You understand me? And they'll say, hey, we have the doctors here. Clap for the doctors. Then we have, you know, all these wonderful professions. Clap. And people are clapping. It's as if it's actually a privilege for the church that you have attended church. Do you understand me? As if they are so honored that, oh, he has come. Can you imagine? He's so important, but he has come to church. It's like you're doing God a favor by showing up in that facility. Do you understand me? And that's, that's where we miss a point as Christians. Jesus Christ is king, and he is king to those that he died for. Are we together? So I want you to find your positioning as an individual. So those who choose to identify him as savior, if you choose to identify Jesus Christ as savior, it means that you have a responsibility upon you as a son, as a daughter in his light. And so your lifestyle should be a lifestyle of gratitude to him as your savior. It should be gratitude. You have a life that is a package of appreciation to God as your king because he is your king. I hope we are still together. Now, let's, let's first understand what the king desires to see. When you, you think through, and, and I'm leaving this to you well aware that you have studied and you've gone through all these things, you go for lectures, oh my God, you wake up in the morning and you're important and you go to class and you come back and then you go to church on Sunday. So there's, there's a degree of maturity that is expected of you. And in my sharing, I can see we have future students of UCU um, right here in, in uniform. Um, I think they came in from Compassion International, right? Yes, so we, we welcome you very much. I'm sure that uh, Madame Karen will give you a very good welcome. Let's, could you, could you stand up please? Could you stand up? I don't think you've seen them. These, these are the future, the future dosas, the future vice chancellors of this institution, and you're very welcome. Thank you, you may sit down. So I need to emphasize this, that when you understand what the king desires, and you will understand this through the studying of his word, what you understand what the king desires to plunge, to plunge into your life, when you take time to understand these things, by looking at him as Christ, by looking at him as king, then you will understand the destiny that the king actually plans for you and you will work in every way to be that. You will want to be that which the king desires to see because you are in his kingdom. You see, believers who are mature, who are immature, sorry, believers who are immature, we remain immature until they begin to see God as king and they, sit, they start to see themselves as subjects to this king. Are we together? He is not someone that you elected. He's not your LC1 chairman for God's sake. You've seen sometimes we clap for God and it's as if, oh my God, we voted you into power. You're, you're like, you know, the, the LC1 chairman. He's not like that, but he is king. He is king. And I'm getting there. 
So I want us to look at Jesus Christ, not just as savior today, as I share, but also as king. And I want us to look at ourselves as people who are responsible. We are charged with a responsibility. It is up to you. It's why we have walked this journey of knowledge. We have come this far. You have an opportunity to actually attend some of the teachings, to understand, to study the word, to open your eyes and come this far and come to attain a certain degree of understanding. So you have a responsibility. It is up to you to do what the king wants. You have the responsibility of understanding that you are the object of the sacrifice of the cross. Are we together? You are the object of the sacrifice of the cross. And that sacrifice is the proof that God actually loves you. And it is totally up to you, not up to your preacher, not up to the chaplain. It is up to you as an individual to accept that sacrifice that was made for you and understand that you're actually that that object and the consequences that come after are totally up to you. They will be blamed on you as a person. So it is up to you to receive it. It is up to you to refuse it. Are we together? Now, by refusing it, it means that you have still made a choice of actually accepting something else. And I'm getting to that. So you have the responsibility of living a lifestyle that the king has demanded. And I'm using this word carefully, demanded. The king has demanded that as a lifestyle. So that should be the essence of your life, that the essence of my life is in God and it is in God alone. It is my assignment, it is your assignment to embrace this, his love for you, to choose to live the life. And, and, and you know, when you wake up in the morning and your target is to satisfy this king, you will actually get there. So as I share this, I'm going to, to, to use, yes, the scripture that we've, we've received, but also the famous uh, Lord's Prayer, which is in Matthew 6, verse, chapter 6, verse 9 onwards. And after here, I need you to study it on your, on, on your own. But it's the same prayer that we say every day. When, when you start to pray, the first thing you do, you begin by letting your prayer be catalyzed by the fact that you're aware that you're approaching Abba, Father, my Father, our Father, my, my Daddy. And that's the language we use that. I would transition into our local languages that are beautiful. But it, it comes um, with you asserting that you are very much assured. You're assured 100% beyond doubt that the person you're speaking to is your Father. Are we together? He is your father. He's your defender. He's your sustainer. He's your protector. He's your provider. And you don't have plan B. Are we together? So I humble myself before you because of the awareness that you are my father, my only father. Now, the second thing is that you, you make it clear that you are aware that the faith that you're using at the moment is required in this interaction because the dimension with, with, with which you are working comes with the awareness that the God you're speaking to is not limited by the physical limitations that surround us. And, and I'm saying this because the connection between you and this father does not come as a result of the physical. Otherwise, he would be stuck on Kampala Road in traffic or there is tear gas and he doesn't know where to pass and come to your rescue. I hope you're still with me. That maybe, maybe, you know, he could be having a headache or he's like, if, if you re you've read Kings, he's like, the, 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 is that like those gods that, that the prophets of Baal worship that could have gone to take a nap or to use the toilet at a time that they are, they are crying out to him. But you are aware that you're using faith, you're approaching him in faith. And so when, when you go on, the third thing is you are aware that because he's a father, you will not let this familiarity come between your interaction with him. But you're aware that his name is supposed to be hallowed. So you are approaching him aware that he is a revered king. May your name be hallowed, hallowed be your name. And the fourth bit is what I'm going to dwell on is may your kingdom come. May the heavenly kingdom of God come 
because everything else is supposed to be preceded by this. It's the first time you're asking for something. You're saying, and, and, and it is why Jesus says that when you are praying, pray according to this pattern. The first time you're asking, just before you start asking for these interesting things that you want, like the new shoes and all these things, first ask that his kingdom shall come. <clears throat> Now, the kingdom of God churns deficiencies out of our lives. He owns the earth. He owns everything. And so the fullness of life and the culture of life, everything is supposed to be stirred by this kingdom. As we go on and talk about that this kingdom, you know, that, that his will will be done on earth. And, and, and there are some versions I noticed that say in earth. Your kingdom, let, you, let your will be done. As your kingdom comes, let your will be done in earth because i am an earthen vessel let your will be done in this establishment that i carry around calling myself that i may be an expression of god every single day because god is the king so as i share this and and and, and i'm coming to my message remember that it's very very important for you to submit yourself to god aware that you are simply the vessel of earth and it is into you that that expression of God's kingdom should be. It is through you because you are in service to the king. The fullness of God is experienced when his will finds expression in your life because this will has the capability of taking away all the old things and bringing in the new stuff. So this happens when you choose. It is up to you. You have to choose. When you choose that everything about you, everything around you, will revolve around you within the awareness that the God that you serve is king. So you're supposed to choose. And I'm going to share with you this interesting reflection that I find in the book of Esther. You see, Queen Vashti forgot that she was queen to the king. Her obedience was supposed to be solely to this king. She was supposed to live in conformity to the king that was over her as king. So she was supposed to front the will of the king. You understand me? From the book of Esther. She was supposed to execute the will of the king. But as you read, you don't even see any bit of repentance coming in. No apology comes from her going to the king, knowing that I have fallen short of your glory, and please, I request that you forgive me. But she had the choice. I like to think that if she had humbled herself before the king, maybe things would have been different. I don't know. But she, she, she should have foregone enjoyment. She should have foregone creating her own camp and having her own celebration camp on the side and put the, the king's demands before all of this. She should have lived her entire life uh, in, in, in complete obedience or submission to the king. So today, I'm asking you, what are you choosing? Who are you choosing as your king? In which ways are you going to start living your life in conformity to the desires of this king? Because he has put a given demand on you and he has invested in you. That's why you come to school. That's why you have all these resources at your disposal. Because it is an investment that the king has put in you and he expects a degree of return from you which should come... Um, it should come and it should be expressed within your obedience to him. So are you aware that in the kingdom, everything centers around the king? Are you aware of that? In Uganda, we are free. You can even abuse the president on social media. You've seen, you've seen these things. No, he will not even care. He will not even know. But you don't do that to the king. Now, I need you to note this with me. Queen Vashti was banished. You understand? Queen Vashti was banished. What is your fate? When you look at the choice that you're making as a subject, what is your choice? And when you make that choice, are you one of those to be banished and you lose out on the new kingdom? Now, it, 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 it's interesting that the king actually fires her from, from, her, in, from her presence, from his presence, sorry. The king fires the queen from his never-ending presence. Now, heaven, 
in this scripture, heaven is defined as the never-ending presence of God. It's, it's, it's as if we are being introduced to this beauty, to this beauty, this, this presence that is an, ex, ex, express, it, it is an expression of an inexpressible beauty that even John seems to run out of words to describe it. And you realize that even when he's being shown around, God gets to appoint and, you know, the angel gets to appoint and says, please write these things down. I, I imagine he's actually taken up and he's watching, he opens his mouth and watches because it is unbelievably beautiful. He, it, it becomes that beautiful place that is real in this scripture, that is a place that you choose to go to, a place of no more suffering, no more pain, no more death, no more brokenness. And I need to add this seriously, no more brokenness. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it is that place that does not pass away. Last evening, as I was thinking about what I would be sharing today, I, 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 I asked my children exactly what they thought would be that very important thing we need to do to get to heaven. And of course, you know, I've lived with them, and I, I like to think that I've taught them. So sometimes you ask questions, and you just want them to give you an answer that will make you feel good. And then kind of pat yourself on the back and say, I've done my job. Damn, I'm good. So I asked them, and of course I expected them to say the right answer, you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, isn't it? So I sat them down, and then I asked, and this is what they told me. Um, they, they said that for you to go to heaven, you have to die. It was a blow. I, I, I want to go on and tell you my emotions, but they told me that you have to die. Now, right as they are, completely right, I also need to emphasize to you that we shall die. It's, it's, it's an undeniable fact, isn't it? And they were right. I mean, we, shall, we are all going to die. All of us will die. One day we just don't know when and how, but clearly, you know, we are all heading there. And, and we shall vacate this life. But then the interesting bit is that everything else will also go. The houses we fight for, the nice things we want to have, they will also go away. You, you realize, I mean, I, I like clothes and all. You, you buy this dress at a certain point, you're totally down for it. And after a short time, you cannot even wear it. It's no longer that important. And it just has to do what? To go. So is your life. It will go totally go and you will no longer be there that's just how the order of things are but you see when we die when we die not if we shall have the presence of standing before the king of kings and i hope that actually we shall have the the, the privilege of standing before this king of kings i hope you will i hope you choose to stand before that person when you have died now, it's a choice you have to make right now, and you make it alone. Nobody makes it for you. Now, I want to see, when I have died, I think I look forward to seeing how the sun can be rendered unnecessary because the presence of God goes on and on and is beautiful enough to produce enough light. You understand that? I, I long for some of these things. I want to live on this new earth where things are new and they are different and there is no war, there are no floods, no conflicts. Beautiful. A different geographical arrangement where there are no floods. You've been to Kampala and it has rained. No floods completely, no tear gas for God's sake. The, the, the social geographical arrangement of things becomes different and becomes desirable. It is something that you choose. Are we together? You choose. You choose it as a person. Nobody does that for you. And you are here. We both know that you are old enough to make that choice. You don't have an excuse. Are we together? You don't have an excuse. You don't have any reason to stand before this king and say, I never knew. I did not know that I would miss out on this. No death. Can you imagine? No death. Like you don't have to cry anymore that you've lost a loved one. No tombs. I don't know if, if you're like me. I hate it. When, when I visit a home 
And the first thing you see is a beautiful set of, of graves. There's a graveyard very well done with green and trees and all of these things. And, 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 and I'm wondering, this is death. This is death. We, we actually have a culture that glorifies death. <laughs> like the most beautified places will be those ones. But this is an opportunity to enjoy a culture of joy and, 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 and life. A culture with the king, the king of kings the culture with someone, to spend a life with someone that you will have chosen to spend a life with. And so it will also be an opportunity to meet the old fathers in the faith. You remember in the story of transfiguration, these guys actually see the old prophets and they know their names. Like nobody says, oh, meet Elijah, meet. They, they know it will be so beautiful that it will happen and I will not need to be introduced to some of these heroes that I have held in my heart because I've read about them in the Bible or in history. But I will see them and I will know them and be reunited with them as my brothers in the faith, as people with whom we are under the same Father and the same God. There's a song I like. Um, those of you who are not in my generation, you may not know it. But, you know, I, I also used to be young once upon a time. This, this, this song is, is titled, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be, by Gaitha, if, if you like Gaitha music. But I'm going to just read, I think, only two stanzas so that time doesn't catch me. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair heaven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. The children were playing without sadness. The women will dance without fear. The men will walk tall with honor. Only light, peace, and love will be there. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. So as I share this, and I wish I had enough time, especially to explore how our Lord's Prayer fits into this scripture very well. It's a very pregnant set of few verses. But you see, it, it throws the ball into your court and it tells you that you need to choose. You understand? It is up to you to choose. You choose now. And when you choose now, you start living according to the new. So that at the end of this all, when this old stuff has passed away, you become part of the newness that God will then reconstruct and bring down. Choose to live according to the will of the king so that you may inherit this beautiful kingdom that he's talked about. Choose today. It's up to you to choose today. Choose that God who is able to bring the new heaven and the new earth down here where we are is the one that you will give yourself so that he can renew you. You see, even where you are, he's able to renew you and he's able to get you and fashion you for this beautiful heaven that you and I would both like to inhabit. Now, those who don't choose the beautiful heaven, like I've said, will be choosing hell and its torments. It's just a choice. It's either this or that, period. There's no in between. And, and I need you to have this sink in you very clearly. Now, imagine you go through life struggles. I mean, I struggle every day. You struggle, you're waking up, you're struggling with this. Some of you struggle with addictions. You, you can't sleep unless you've smoked it. Some of you, you know, you have the demands of the flesh that are being put on you. Generally, it's a life of struggle. And then you die, and still you go through the torments. At least I, I should forego one of those. Don't you think? There's, there's a story I was listening to by one of the ladies who who said she used to be active in the kingdom of darkness and witchcraft and all of this, and there are so many going around. But this particular one narrates a story of how she stood before Satan, and one of her heroes in, in the work they were doing had died, and she had committed suicide. And this is one of the famous people some of you may know. And, and, and she, she committed suicide. She couldn't live with the torments of life. I think her mom had died and she had a lot of problems and then she was on drugs and basically bad, bad, bad stuff. And then she decides to end her life. So she, now she comes as a dead person before the, before the devil. And, and, she, and, and demons are chasing after and she stands and she says, please help me because she had been serving him, hoping he will now take him on and give him the wonderful things he promised when she was still alive serving him. 
and, and the devil said, there is no mercy here. You understand? He said, there is no mercy here. Just devour her. And, and she was tortured, like tortured before this young lady. And it is after that that, that the young lady starts considering accepting Christ as her Lord and Savior, which she did later. Now, I'm, I'm asking you, is it worth it that you should struggle here and struggle in the life after? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's worth it that you should live and disregard the king who is available for you, by the way, that all you have to do is say, I choose you, and then at the end of the day, still go through the torment? You see, we struggle. I mean academics alone. You guys have just started. Some of you are in first year. You're still in your academic honeymoon. And God help me. I hope you're using this time <laughs> to enrich yourselves because the stories we hear sometimes. Okay? You're still in your academic honeymoon. You've not yet started real, you know, the real struggles. Course works every day. You know, financial limitations, no school fees. Then the sponsor has delayed. Then you're alone. Your family is away and issues and, you know. And, 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 you know, God is able to get you and turn these bad stories around and renew you for himself because he's able to bring and make all things new. You understand me? And then start fashioning you for this world where you, you just stay in his never-ending presence. Now, you go through this and then you die, which is a fact, by the way. I need to emphasize this. You will die. We shall die. You go through all of this and then you die and then you go through the ugliness and the torment that comes with the afterlife. Is that the choice that you would rather make? Okay, so choose today. There's a life that is prepared for you. And it is prepared for you in a beautiful place called heaven. On a beautiful place that, that, that this portion is calling the new heaven and the new earth. And this place from this scripture is locatable. Okay, it is locatable. It is not a state of mind. You know there are these people come and tell you that heaven is a state of mind, that it's something you close your eyes and imagine, you imagine utopia. But it's not what the book is telling us. It is, it, is, it is described as a literal place. It is described as that place that you would rather be because it is beautiful. Would you rather be in this place or for you you choose to be in the torments of hell? Would you rather live now in obedience to the king of kings so that you're not banished away? Or would you rather be banished away and you th go through further suffering than the one that you're encountering now at the moment? This is a choice that I'm telling you is something that you make as a person. And, 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 and I will share with you that even as God has the power, the capacity, the ability to bring down a new heaven and a new earth and bring them on this earth that he passes away. And does away. You realize that the scripture says that there is no sea, there is no ocean, there is no dividing line. It actually brings us all together. Now, if God is able to do that, what more can he do with your life? You as an individual. It's the question I'm throwing out to you. Now, I'm leaving it to you to choose. Choose. You have to choose first. It's not a choice you make later. It's a choice you make now. And for those of you who have actually never taken on Christ as your Lord and Savior and as your King, I, I actually feel sorry for you. Because you, you miss out. Like you, you, you lead an ugly life here on earth and then you lead an ugly life after you have died. Like, why, why should it be ugly times too, for God's sake? And yet, you have, you actually, you are able. I, I have seen how God has transformed lives. Someone came into my office last semester, and we talked about this before I came. And she, she had had a problem, and, and she would have to smoke before sleeping. And I'm not talking about these cigarettes. They are heavy things that she would smoke. Beautiful, beautiful girl. I mean, she walks past you and you're like, damn, she, she, she was fashioned properly. But after, when it starts getting dark, she has to call one of those drug suppliers and say, at least give me just, and, and, and these things are now cheap, very cheap. You can, you can actually afford it. 
And you see, the more you smoke it, the more you want more. You understand? And as you want more, you start graduating. You graduate from this level of this normal weed, and then you go to the higher kind of weed. And then you go to the next one, the next level, and then you start injecting yourself. And she was heading there. Because they're available, then you start getting needles and you're pushing them through your veins. Because you want what? Sleep. You understand that? So we walk a journey. And her life started changing. Let me tell you, if God can make a new heaven and a new earth, he can make a new you. You understand me? A new you who does not need to depend on some substance to sleep. Because sleep is a basic need. And the Bible says that God gives those who he loves what? Sleep. Free of charge. You don't call a border guy for some supply so that you can, uh, uh, you can be able to do what? To sleep. You will sleep and it will be morning. And she was surprised. She said, these days I sleep. Can you imagine I sleep? And I said, wow, you sleep. You understand me? You see, this king... This king who is telling you, I am king and I need you to start living in obedience to me is a transformative king and it is up to you to accept him as that. And as I end right now, I'm making an open invitation to you. If you feel you want to renew your work with this king, please, it is your opportunity to do so. And I'm going to request you to stand up and the choir will give us a song just for two minutes and then we'll close. Please give us a chorus. Please stand up. All of us, let us stand up. Maybe you had fallen off or you're considering falling off or you have not even given yourself to this king and you feel it's high time I gave myself to this king. This king is able to give you the basic things like sleep, but also to do more, to do more and open doors, double doors for you, doors of a lot of things for you, so that as you live on earth, your life is as fulfilled as it should be. I'm going to make this invitation to you to come. Come, let us pray together. Let us walk with you. We are happy to walk with you and teach you how to be obedient and how to work with God as your king and live in obedience to him. Please. to make a new you. Are we together? If this king says, I'm here and I'm able to make a new you and I'm available for you, but you choose to reject him, it is still up to you. It's a choice 
that you have to make. So I am encouraging you that even after service and you would like to make a commitment to God, to Jesus Christ and take him on as your Lord and Savior, but as your King, feel free to come to the chaplain, feel free to come to the dosa, and we shall walk with you and lead you, lead, walk with you on this journey so that you don't get lost. Otherwise, I, I just want us to pray together and then I will ask the chaplain to pray for our sister who has given her life to Christ and then we shall end. God, we thank you. We thank you, our King, our King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you that there is hope, oh God, there is hope for each one of us that, my God, you have chosen to fashion us, us, the earthen vessels, us, oh God, who are frail, who are limited. You've chosen that you will fashion us for you and for your will. We thank you. We thank you because when we come to you, Lord, we come to a transformative king who looks at us and sees more than what we can see, oh God. We thank you. We praise you for each one of us, even for those who are not here, oh God. We pray that you, our King of Kings, who is not limited by anything, that you will dispatch your soldiers, you will dispatch your hosts to find your children and bring them to your throne so that we may all live in submission to you. And my God, when that day has come, that day when you come to take away the old heaven and bring the new one, when you come to take away the old earth and bring the new one, Father, we want to be among the number. We want to be among those people who will live in your presence, your never-ending presence, that we shall be enjoying you. We enjoy who you are, oh God, and we enjoy your presence at all times. So we invite you, my God, to come into our lives. Come and audit who we are, oh God. Come and change us and let your transformative power work through us so that your glory shall spread through us, shall emanate through us, we shall emit the presence of God even on this earth and to the ends of the world, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God, the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Father, they are yours and yours alone, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.